As young investors, we have an advantage over the older generations of stock market investors that we rarely consider. We have access to exchange-traded funds or ETFs about everything our hearts and our minds desire. If you want to invest in AI and robots, there's an ETF for that. If you fancy shorting ARK Invest because you are mad at Kathy Wood, there's an ETF for that. If you want to invest in Metaverse, there's an ETF for that too. It is truly the golden age of investing. And today, I want to introduce you to a rare and unique ETF that gives us a chance to invest in freedom. My name is Hono Mer, founder and CEO of Starcard, and I am so impressed by one particular ETF that allows you and me to bet on freedom. Those of us who live in countries where citizens enjoy civil, political, and economic freedom to pursue our dreams hardly consider it as a factor in our investment strategy. However, research shows a strong correlation between freedom and prosperity. The Fraser Institute, a Canadian public policy think tank, publishes an annual human freedom index and has shown that economic growth is much faster in countries with higher freedom scores. The institute groups countries into quarter based on their level of economic freedom. The freest quartile has an average income seven times higher than the least free quartile. The top free countries have an average income of 42,000 versus 6,000 in the least free countries. Between 1990 and 2015, economic growth averaged 3.3% a year in the freest quartile, whereas the least free countries experienced only a 1.6% growth. If such a difference in average income and economic growth is translated into stronger public corporations and faster growing stock markets, by investing in countries with higher freedom score, you get an immediate higher return. And that's precisely what one exchange traded fund does, giving you a chance to invest and bet on the economic results of liberty and freedom to gain higher returns in your portfolios. It also gives us the chance to put money where our mouth is if we believe in fundamental human rights that such as the right to be free politically, personally, and economically. As always, this episode is based on my personal research to share interesting stock market stories and detailed investment research and is not a financial advice. You should learn how to do your own research or talk to an advisor if you need help. The Freedom 100 Emerging Markets ETF, ticker FRDM, is the exchange-rated fund that I'd like to introduce and research today. The fund is run by an amazing fund manager, Perth Toll, who is a superstar in the ETF industry and professional finance world. Perth was a private wealth advisor at Fidelity Investments before launching FRDM ETF and is named one of the 10 to watch by Wealth Management Magazine and 100 People Transforming Business by Business Insider. Not only Perth is the fund manager behind the Freedom ETF, she is also the founder of Life and Liberty Index. To understand how the ETF is connected to the index, you can think of it as the relationship between SPY ETF and S&P 500 index. The S&P 500 index is the list of 500 leading public traded companies in the US that are weighted based on market capitalization. The index is not tradable in the stock market by itself. It just manages the process of letting companies in and out of the list. The SPY Exchange Traded Fund is the tradable fund that mirrors the S&P 500 index, allowing you and me to invest in the index. The same goes for FRDM ETF and the Life and Liberty Index. The Life and Liberty Index is the methodology behind the ETF, and the ETF is a way for us to invest in that strategy and philosophy. It all starts with the Fraser Institute, which ranks countries yearly based on 83 distinct indicators such as the rule of law, size of government, security, and safety. Countries such as Switzerland, New Zealand, and Estonia take the top three spots as an example. Interesting to see that the United States is ranked 23. Countries like Syrian Arab Republic, Yemen, and Venezuela took the last three spots in the latest ranking. Such ranking is openly and freely available. I will leave a link to it in the show notes. Perth and her team at the Life and Liberty Indexes use that data with permission to come up with their index. The index takes 24 emerging countries using a 10-part scoring system based on the Fraser Institute data. The index then screens each country's stock market for its top publicly listed companies by market cap and then invests in those companies weighted based on the relative freedom and liberty score of the respective countries. 
And then you and I get to invest in the resulting ETF. So the Freedom 100 Emerging Markets ETF is the world's first freedom-weighted emerging markets equity strategy in the form of an ETF. We think that freer markets have more sustainable growth, they recover faster from drawdowns, and they use their capital more efficiently, both human capital and economic capital, and they experience less capital flight and capital destruction. And so we want to be in places where companies are free to act in their own best interests instead of the best interests of the state. The ETF rebalances its holdings on the third Friday in January every year. If something happens in a country during the year, they don't do much about it until the next year. There are some exemption rules for a scenario when a country falls more than five points on one of the scales the Freedom and Liberty team uses for its scoring system. In such cases, the ETF may take action due to the rapid decline in the freedom score of a country. But that has been quite rare in its short history as a publicly traded fund. Another interesting exemption rule is that if a company is ranked quite high in one country due to its market capitalization, but more than 80% of its assets are in another country that doesn't make it to the index, the ETF excludes that company from its holding. A good example of this case is Tencent. It is apparently listed on the South Africa Stock Exchange and more than 80% of its assets are in China. And China isn't a country that is included in the Life and Liberty Index at this point. So the Freedom ETF team had to drop Tencent from their holdings, even though South Africa made it to the index. I bring these exemptions up because to me, such interesting deep dives increase the fund's operating costs and give me the confidence that you and I can't do this on our own without spending lots of time picking countries and companies. The ETF has only been available for almost four years, and is already managing more than 200 million in assets. It has been overperforming the S&P 500 in the last months, three months, six months, year to date, and one year. Despite all the work the fund does in managing its index, it charges less than 0.5% in fees, and it's not a leveraged fund with a lower beta than S&P 500, making it a fund with quite a favorable score on its ETF card on our platform. However, you can't have only upsides. There are also risks associated with the Freedom ETF. It has higher exposure to small and microcap companies than its benchmark index, and more than 40% of its assets are concentrated in the top 10 companies. Let's recap. The ETF industry gives us investors a unique opportunity to invest in interesting and rare strategies. And today we looked at one such ETF. It's a fund that allows us to invest in the economic value of having personal, civil, and economic freedom. We learned that average personal income is seven times higher in the top quartile of countries with the highest freedom score versus the lowest. And we learned how the Freedom 100 Emerging Market ETF run by fund manager Perthol has managed to capitalize on that fact by creating an ETF that has overperformed the S&P 500 in the recent months. I highly recommend you research the ETF on your own. I leave a link in the show notes to take you to its ETF card. And if you have come across other interesting ETFs, make sure to share them in the comments. While talking about ETFs, I recently published a video on the top three ETF investing models and how to screen the market to find the top ETFs for each model. It's a good video to watch after this one. I'll see you next time.